This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hi guys, in this video we'll be going over how I made the flower shop piece in a quick breakdown. Great, so I usually start my projects with a block out and I made sure to block everything out very precisely by always looking at the reference here. And when I look at the reference, I think about alpha cards as well. So I'm thinking that the sign will be a alpha card on one UV set and that the flowers will be on one UV set. The other items as well and the hanging vines and plants will also be in their own category. So I'm thinking about this ahead of time, just making sure that I know where they'll be placed and uh, modeling can be very simple at this stage. I usually go pretty simple to make sure I get all the forms and make sure it's very accurately the same as the reference. Usually it takes me about three to five days because it's very important in making sure that it looks exactly like the reference that I want as well as uh, always checking in with the lighting, how thinking about it subconsciously about how you want the lights to be angled and things like that. So after blocking out the 3D pieces, I move on to the alpha cards and I bring my reference into Clip Studio. I'm personally just more comfortable in Clip Studio, but Photoshop will also work. And I think about those shapes again, those circles and the categories I separated them into. Then I would start painting in how I would like the UVs to be laid out. So I think ahead of time when you have to eventually cut up the card, the cards, plural. Um, and I would use a grid-like system pretty loosely, but a grid-like system where you kind of place everything so you know which parts of the piece they're on. And I would do that for all of them since I made five categories and I would just revisit the reference always and get those basic forms in. It's pretty similar to how you would block in a like a thumbnail sketch for concept art or um, like exactly like the block out just put in 2D and this is no lines, no shading and uh, there are other ways to do this. Personally I don't really use grids but you can also use the lines coming down so give yourself some space and just a little bit of an outline of where you want the straight edges to go and there's also the ruler tool I use a lot um, I use the ruler to make sure that everything was kind of on the same grid and yeah okay so as you can see I have made everything a targa in Photoshop and I have placed them all in my scene in the correct spot and it did take a little bit <laughs> a little bit of time but once you get the correct spots and you can you can you're free to transform them with the soft select tool in Maya and that's very helpful in making smooth lines and smooth movements that are not too harsh and that are still they still match the style of the concept art that you're going for and they really do help 
make the block out look more completed. Now the next step is beginning your UV. After you have finished your 3D block out, you have to make sure you optimize everything, which means take away unwanted faces that are maybe colliding into the wall that you don't need, and thinking about pieces that you can duplicate after you've done UVing them. So in this case, those four uh, railings on the side were all duplicated, as well as the awnings. Um, and you have to just keep in mind about what the, you want, what the viewer can't see, and what the viewer can see. So things like the tires, you can always duplicate because the way the lighting hits it will be about the same. But with the case of the vases and things, those always need to be done and UV'd as their own separate piece in one side. And always keep in mind about the textile density as well, such as the sign and how much you can fit into one UV space. I personally made all my textures to be around 2K, with the exception of the bigger pieces being around 4K, depending on how much you fit into the UV space. And again, keeping in mind what do you want the viewer to see, how you're able to reuse those pieces, as this is still an environment piece, optimization is always uh, on my mind as well. And um, if you, this is also the pretty optimal stage for adding in any missing pieces. I almost forgot to add in a few crucial parts of the piece at this part, but I always had to make sure, double check the reference because that is the most important thing and that is your goal, it's what you're aiming for, and it's one of the most important things you can do. Great, so your UVs are done and now it is time to test it out in the render. So when I test it out in the renderer, which is Marmoset in this case, I make sure to put in my base colors and play around with the lighting. I used the default skylighting, which is not ideal, So, but this is good as a starting point to see and test out how the renderer works and how you want, and like a good plan on how you want the lighting to be. Great, so now that your UVs are done, I started working on the alpha cards. Since the last time we saw them, they were pretty rough, I had to redo most of it and accentuate and make sure that everything was the way I wanted it to be. Um, keeping in mind, I always looked back on my block out as well, just to make sure that I had everything in the right place and that the flowers I were drawing were correct. And the lighting is also very important at this stage. Since everything is a Lambert, you need to be adding in all of the highlights and shadows that would be in normally when you're hand painting. Um, I use some correction layers pretty often just because everything you do in the albedo map usually isn't as vibrant as it is when you render it. So I usually go a little bit lighter than normal. Um, and it worked out all right, but uh, the main focus of the piece was the very hard lines. There weren't too many soft lines other than the shading, so you had to keep in mind that the main focus was clean, sharp lines that were easy to read and easy to make out, and there was no noise you know what everything is just by looking at it, and that was part of the charm. Alright, so after I finished the alpha cards, I moved on to the main piece. And in the, the base color, I made sure to go over the lines that I wanted on the 3D model itself. So things like the lines on the wood, on the edges, and the shingles on the roof, I really wanted to 
accentuate it as well as any of the sharper corners of the piece because I know that's what the original reference had and that's what I wanted to make an emphasis on in my own piece so it was very clear Okay, so at this point, I decided to bring it back into Marmoset and redo the lighting since it wasn't that what I wanted it to be. So I put it back into Marmoset and referred back to the reference and I wanted the shadow to go over the bike and create that casting shadow shape that was in the reference as well as the highlights coming from the side. I made sure to keep that in mind coming from the right side so that I know when I am shading in the rest of the piece I know which way the direction of the light is going as well as the awning shadow and the shadow going past the door and how far I wanted it to be it was much easier to control after I redid all of the lighting together. Alright, so these are my final textures for the 3D model. I made sure to add in all of the highlights and the some of the shadows that I uh, baked in Substance Painter for my ambient occlusion, as well as the little details such as the green stripes on the awning and the flower petals on the bench. So same thing with the elephants watering can which is really cute I really enjoy doing it uh, with the vases though I made sure to give the effect of different roughnesses by keeping in some hard and some softer highlights um, yeah so these would be the signs as well as the door um, all painted I always referred back to my block out in marmoset when thinking about the highlights and shadows so just so that I know where everything was, again, it's really important to just have even a lighting reference really helps when you're shading. Um, and also adding in the little details that you see, you're always thinking about what you want to add and where you want to add them. So perspective here is really important. Um, and when you're painting it, as well as the ambient occlusion I use that to kind of space out where everything is and the shingles were very important with the perspective as well so this is my end result I was very happy and pleased with it um, it really captures everything that I liked about the original reference piece which I really enjoyed and I feel like everything came together really well and I am very proud of this piece as my first demo reel piece of this year and I really enjoyed working on it. I feel like hand painted textures are something that I am always very inspired by and I love watching and playing games that have this kind of style and it's kind of what I aim for when making any 3D environment is making something that I'm passionate about and that's stylized environments and I really enjoyed making this piece not just for myself but it also kind of displays my abilities as well okay so that's the end of my breakdown video I hope you guys all enjoyed it I would really appreciate it if you visited my art station page and gave it a look just because I am a student currently and it would be really really appreciated and I hope to do more stylized environments in the future because I really enjoy doing this and making this video is also really fun so I hope you guys learned or enjoyed watching my breakdown video thank you